Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's Accelerate Your Performance podcast. I'm your host, Janet Pilcher. Thanks for having a desire to be your best at work and help your organization achieve success. This podcast is all about actions we can take to improve workplace culture and achieve results. And they're all aligned to our nine principles for organizational excellence. For today's episode, we have with us Superintendent of the Estacada School District, Dr. Ryan Carpenter, and Studer Education Leader Coach, Dr. Kathy Oropalo. Kathy and Ryan have partnered together in their work of continuous improvement for the past two and a half years, and recently, they authored a chapter in Teaching Improvement Science in Educational Leadership. The chapter they collaborated on is about aligning values, goals, and processes to achieve results. Ryan's leadership at Estacada is a shining example of this, and we'll talk more about that in today's interview. But first, let me tell you a little bit more about our guest. Kathy joined the Huron Studer Education team in 2018 and is an expert in classroom improvement. Her unique work experience crosses public, private, and nonprofit educational sectors. Previously, Kathy served as the Florida Department of Education Director of Reading First Professional Development. In this role, She managed federal grants and delivered professional services to all 67 counties in Florida. Kathy is also passionate about designing unique adult and student learning experience. As a curriculum designer, she gained school improvement experience in some of the most challenging demographics in the U.S. in both large urban districts and small rural districts. Kathy has also developed and published materials and professional learning for thousands of educators around the country. Now let's talk a little bit about Ryan. Ryan Carpenter has been an educator and leader for 14 years and has served as the superintendent of the Estacated School District since 2017. For the past three years, the Estacated School District has been in pursuit of sustaining high levels of improvement science methodology and has been a partner with Studer Education since 2019. Ryan's leadership has received recognition as the 2016 Oregon Future Business Leaders of America Principal of the Year. The Estacada Chamber of Commerce awarded Ryan the 2018 School Employee of the Year. His work on improvement science has also been published in books and professional journals. While serving as superintendent, the Estacada School District has also received accolades for organizational excellence. In 2020, the Estacada School District was honored as one of the only 19 school districts in the United States to be recognized as a model PLC district by Solution Tree. Estacada Schools also achieved the highest honors from its employees. And in 2020 and 2021, Estacada was selected for the top workplaces in the state of Oregon. For six consecutive years, Estacada High School has also been recognized as a top high school by U.S. News and World Reports. Ryan has also been selected as a 2021 Superintendent to Watch by the National School Public Relations Association. He joins just 19 superintendents across the nation who were selected for this honor. So it's with great pleasure that I welcome to our show today, Kathy Oropala and Ryan Carpenter. Thanks, Janet. It's great to be here. And a pleasure to be here as well. I love this show, and it's always an honor to be asked to be on it. So thank you again. Absolutely. So let's kick in. First of all, just great work on collaborating on this book chapter, which highlights the success um, that can be achieved through committing to the work of continuous improvement, the work that you're doing so much. Um, Good work, Ryan, at Estacada School District. Thank and you. Kathy, with your support there. So Ryan, why don't you tell us about how the opportunity for you and Kathy, you know, started to contribute this chapter, that how it came about and tell us a little bit more about the significance. So if you start a little bit, and then I think Kathy can join in with her contribution with you, I think that'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. And so as we know, improvement science is really sweeping the nation primarily at the higher education level as well as K-12 education level. And so um, as the Estacada School District has uh, become practitioners in partnership with student education, um, a, a author and editor of a book uh, reached out to me as the superintendent of the Estacada School District um, in an effort to kind of share our improvement science journey. Um, and so 
this book that's uh, Kathy Oropalo, uh, my great leader coach from Student Education, um, and I got to collaborate on is really a book that's a compilation of practitioners from around the United States who are actually doing improvement science or continuous improvement work uh, and have evidence, data, and experience to share out there. And what I love about this book that Kathy and I both got to contribute to is really the fact that this compilation of practitioners now um, is being shared at the higher education level. So these are in schools where uh, young administrators are learning, young teachers, um, and other leaders uh, throughout the college course system. And so uh, it's an honor to be able to contribute that. But it's also great just to see that higher education is moving in a direction to equip uh, today's future leader with the opportunity to conduct continuous improvement cycles. And so it's really just an honor to share our journey and hope that that contributes to other uh, current and future and prospect practitioners uh, of this work. So it really was a fun experience, but uh, Kathy can tell you more about that too. Yeah, I think one of the most exciting parts about being able to write the journey, especially the early journey, was the work with the evidence-based leadership framework where we were slowly beginning to align the system in Estacada and we were working on establishing routines and, and processes like survey cycles. And those survey cycles were really helpful uh, and providing us with some evidence to then be able to do some leader actions and move forward. So this book really um, captured our early learning. It, I think it helped connect us to the purpose of the work and it reminded us where we started and where we were when we st started writing and just how much progress we had made along the way. And I think it was really powerful. That's great. And, you know, um, Kathy, I really love what you just said, because, you know, that survey work, we always say things like we do the surveys to get data and, and people can see where they land. But the most important part is the improvement work that's around the results of the survey. And that gives us a chance to help people get into that rhythm of continuous improvement in practice. And so I love the love the idea of starting with that so that we build off of that that approach to do continuous improvement. You know, just think back, Ryan, just our, you know, connection over the last couple of years and the Estacada School District under your leadership and, you know, with Kathy's continued coaching uh, in partnership with the school district, you know, you've become a model. And the book chapter highlights the different aspects of your district in that early improvement journey, you know, that, that made a real difference. So things like leader huddles, leader-led results rollout, what Kathy talked about, the leader rounding process and checking in with stakeholders. So can you talk a little bit more about, about those and, you know, the commitment that you've made in your district to those practices? Yeah, well, thank you. And, and what an honor to be recognized. Uh, it's, it's really a um, true credit to a team and an organization who is really committed to excellence and trying our best to offer the best service that we can provide to our community in which we're just at the end of the day trying to educate its children uh, and allow them to be uh, competitive in the outside world and trying to recruit and retain talented people. Uh, and so thank you uh, for, for recognizing our school district and our hard work. Um, I think it's first important, you mentioned a lot of things, uh, rounding, uh, feedback loops. We didn't all do that at once. Uh, we started slow and we, we established fundamentals in a framework. Um, and uh, thanks to you know, our great coach, Kathy, because probably like most leaders who are like me listening today, they want to just get after it and do it all right now. Um, and it's like drinking from a fire hydrant. Just the water is coming out at a thousand miles an hour. And it was really, uh, you know, Kathy, our coach, who, who really slowed me down and said, you've got to start slow to go fast. And so I would say that what, what attributed to some of our early wins was really consistency. And so when you mention the huddles as one of our strategies, you know, consistency of our huddles, of bringing people together regularly, um, allowing us to kind of work out the kinks and celebrate some of the great things that were happening, but also just the consistency of working through challenges together. Uh, our first challenge working through together was messy uh, and unorganized. And I don't even know if we accomplished anything, um, but we just kept coming back to the table and working together as a team. We also established feedback loops and, you know, establishing 30, 60, and 90-day improvement cycles was so critical. 
And again, as we started, they were messy and sloppy and we got data. We didn't really know what to do with the data. And then the next time we got data and we didn't really know how to ask questions and we just improved uh, over time and started having deeper conversations um, about different problems that we were gonna try to solve together systematically. Um, we also were an organization, probably like many who are listening today, who was an organization who worked in silos. Uh, and so just bringing people together to get out of their silos and, and celebrate accomplishments together um, and work through problems together um, was a new behavior for our organization. But by consistently coming together uh, has allowed us to thrive as new challenges come our way. And then I think it's also important, Janet, because as leaders listen to this too, there's a lot of things that start at the top, but in order for our school district to be successful in the tools that you mentioned is we needed to empower our people to take action. Mm -hmm. We wanted them to be curious. I wanna say a quote that my, my coach, Kathy Arapalo tells me, and when you look at the data, you don't get furious, you get curious. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, as you see the data, it's awful easy to say, well, they don't understand, or, you know, they didn't, they didn't do this question right, or the results weren't what I wanted them to be. Um, and so it's important to empower the leaders who you work with to ask questions, to be honest um, about the data that's coming to them, and then allow them uh, to make their own action plans and try to address the problem that the data is telling to in their way. Because at the end of the day, even if that fails, it's still good work because we're failing forward and we're trying to make improvements based on what the people are telling us and what the data is telling us. And so it's been quite a journey um, and we didn't do it all at once. It took time. And by the way, we failed a lot, but we learned together as we failed. And that was the, that's probably the best part of this whole journey. Yeah. The idea of just staying with it, Ryan, and yeah. being consistent and consistent with those practices and empowering people through the difficulties of, of looking at that data, you know, with sometimes the brutal facts and, and a good lens and being able to have dialogue around that, you know, that that's core, you know, to that process yes. that you're really bringing out that regardless of what tactic you do, those principles that we just talked about right there are extremely important. So it, you know, it ties over Kathy then to, you know, like it was, we always say the improvement part and then the culture part sit side by side, right? You can't That's do right. one without the other. So, you know, from your lens, what role um, does culture play in the organization in this journey for continuous improvement? And what does it take for leaders to, to be able to strengthen their workplace cultures to get this work done? So the culture is all about people. And it's the way we see each other and the way we see our work together. And so one of the things that I think is really powerful is how you engage people um, and align your core values to the behaviors and decisions that you're making. So by, by having some defined values and knowing what your values were and starting with values first, it helped people see their shared purpose. And I think that helped build the culture, but, but you have to take it a little bit farther and further and really think about, you know, okay, so we have a purpose. So what's my role in that, in that process? And how do we establish a shared, shared ownership in the goals and the direction that we're going? And so I think that, that, that conversation that Ryan just had about empowerment and letting people do what they do best, uh, giving them the opportunities to work together, establishing those consistent routines where they can come together and keep all of that visible, I think, is a really important part of, of building that workplace culture. I think another piece that's really important is harvesting those early wins and those small moves. And so Estacada did a beautiful job of making that hardwired into their agendas and into their system so that some of the first things they practiced in a meeting were the wins and gratitude. And I think that really helps strengthen a culture around their values. Yeah, so good. You know, you alluded to it as well, Ryan, just harvesting the wins. There's nothing magical. You know, I think about the conversation that we're having right now and the responses. There's nothing magical about what we're saying. It feels magical when it begins to occur, but it's just that good, hard, solid work of harvesting those wins and building that consistency of practice and can keeping at it, you know, keeping, 
keeping at it that really um, it, that helps build that culture in that improvement process. So just excellent, excellent work there. You know, as, as Ryan, I just can't help it as I'm sitting here listening to you talk about where you are, you know, knowing that we had conversations several years ago at the beginning of the journey. How great. I mean, how great what you've done as a leader is really spectacular. So I just, I just want to note that because you have opened your mind and your heart um, to do the things that you've needed to do with your people. And Kathy, you know, really just nice partnership work along the way to, to move this or to move your organization to just a, a, a good place and continue to get better. Thank you, Janet. So with that, Ryan, you know, you were speaking of it, we were failing and I think we're, we're constantly learning through whatever, <laughs> whatever mistakes that we make, you know, yeah. or whatever, wherever we get off track, we're pulling ourselves back on track. What's the greatest lesson you've learned through this improvement journey that might, you know, help others, even if they're kind of feel, feeling burned out right now? Yeah, absolutely. And I have learned so many valuable leadership lessons through this evidence-based leadership framework. But really, we've got to remember that that's the whole point of continuous improvement is to look at the data, learn from things that worked and didn't work, collaborate with your team, make adjustments, executing, and really just keep learning. That's the point. But here's what I would say to the leaders who are listening today who are either a beginner in this work or even have a few years under their belt. I would say, Janet, to the beginner, it's important to start slow so that you can go fast later. You don't need to reach your long-term vision of perfection tomorrow. Uh, Start with your core leadership team. Begin hardwiring just the fundamentals of how to collect data uh, and start by just putting people first. Uh, You have to build fundamentals first. You can't expect your team to conduct complex root cause analysis of systemic problems if there's really no system in place to collect the data or to ask the questions, et cetera. In Estacada, we started by putting our people first. We started with writing thank you cards uh, to employees who were exhibiting behaviors within our organizational culture that we wanted to see repeated. It started literally that simply by just writing thank you cards. It's how we started. Uh, We wanted to establish a culture of recognizing and rewarding aligned actions. We also began surveying our parents, employees, and students using the Studer survey systems, which are awesome, uh, so that we could begin to start looking at data and just asking very simple why questions, and then make adjustments to improve our services to the key stakeholders. Um, We worked slow. Uh, We built an organizational foundation around these core principles. Uh, And then we've really just kind of built out from there, but we really started simple and slow, like you talked about. And now we're kind of like a snowball, right? We started with a small little piece of snow and we're now a gigantic snowball rolling hard down a hill in an unstoppable fashion, really. Um, But another important learning to our veteran leaders I'd like to just share in this work, um, that there's always going to be distractions, disruptions, and reasons that try to pull us away from this very important leadership framework. Uh, It's absolutely mission critical that you don't allow these reasons to be excuses not to execute the work. They need to be uh, the context. They need to serve as the context in which you and your team execute the mission, vision, and values to reach your goals. Uh, Just an example, I know that all of your listeners, Janet, can understand with, especially in education right now, is staffing during the Omicron surge has really stretched us in ways that are compromising our operational integrity. And it sure is awful easy to say, well, I can't round today. I can't focus on my leader action plans today. I can't stay focused on this work because I have other things that I need to do. And my advice, Janet, to your leaders, especially those who are in this work, is as the CEO or visionary leader on the team, maintaining that focus starts with you. You must be empathetic, of course, to all the different challenges that your teammates are facing um, and use those challenges as the context for continuous improvement. How can we execute our goals through these challenges? So you can do it, just keep going, don't give up. 
Yeah, I think great, great advice. Um, and looking at that from, you know, just your lessons as well. So, you know, Kathy, as we think about your advice to give leaders who want, you know, to do get on the continuous improvement journey. And I love what you just said with that transition to this, to this question, Ryan is, you know, right now people are probably like, ah, no, no, you know, I've got all these things that I have to deal with. Why would I want to do that? But what you're saying is it's more important than ever to do that. So Kathy, just would love to hear from you in terms of what would your advice be for leaders? I think it's a part of that fundamental that Ryan's talking about, which is, um, in spite of everything happening, if we can focus on progress, progress means that we went from point A to point B. And even if it's a small step, that's progress. And I think a lot of times what makes us feel overwhelmed is we're searching for the, the grand outcome instead of the small wins and um, helping people celebrate those small wins and to see those small wins. Sometimes we don't even see the forest through the trees in this environment because everything is so big around us. And so working with the districts around the country, one of the things we've talked about is make progress part of your agenda. Every time you, you get a small win, celebrate that, make it visible and talk about that. And that's really important. It also connects us back to purpose. It also helps us stay motivated. So, if, you know, if you, if you don't, if you've got somebody covering a class, that's progress. There's somebody there, you know, and in some of the circumstances are, are tough, but people have found really creative solutions to keep things moving forward. And I think that's, that, that's a really big piece in the process. And the other thing is a, a, a story that uh, I think back to this beginning with Ryan is when he was working in this, the first day I met him, the end of the day, he looked at every leader eye to eye. And he said, I don't expect perfection from you, but I do expect excellence. And he went around to every leader and said that to them. And what he meant by excellence, and he said it, is excellence means I just want you to do your best. That's all I can ask of you. And so, you know, abandoning that concept of getting it right or getting it perfect, I think is another really powerful lesson whether you're just starting on this journey or whether you're facing the pandemic. So good, Kathy. Thank you. And Ryan, I'll um, turn it over to you to summarize for the day and uh, giving our audience kind of your last reflective thoughts. Yeah. Well, well, thank you again, Janet. And, and I do encourage uh, for those of you who are hungry to learn more uh, about practicing continuous improvement or evidence-based leadership to, to look at the book, Teaching Improvement Science and Educational Leadership. That's the chapter uh, that we're talking about today. Um, and I also just wanna encourage leaders out there that um, we all have aspirations to write and contribute to the professional field, but uh, it's also just equally as important for you as the leader to tell your story. Uh, it's great uh, to present, to write, um, to publish and to contribute, but really at the end of the day, um, it's important for you and your organization as a leader just to be able to continually tell your story and share your journey. Um, and so it was an honor to write this with my coach, Kathy, and in with partnership of Studer Education but it was more of an honor to be able to share and celebrate uh, the things that we've accomplished and that I had a chance to accomplish with my great leadership team. Uh, and I will always be looking for new ways to share that journey with others who, who listen or don't listen. Uh, I just want to share that journey. And my encouragement to you, the leader who is listening today, is what can you do today, this week or next month, uh, to share your story with others? And thanks again for allowing me to be a part of this conversation today, Janet. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ryan. And thank you, Kathy. And we will post where people can get a copy of the book with your book chapter. I'm just so proud, Ryan and Kathy, so, so proud of the work that Ryan, that you've done in the district and Kathy, just as part of our organization, the contributions that you make. This is what, what the work is all about. It's making a difference to organizations that we work with and Ryan, you making a difference to you know students and families in your community and thank being you. a model and being a model district for others to follow. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. When you hear from Ryan and Kathy, they make it seem so simple, don't they? But it's a lot of hard work, yet they know how to make the complex simple. <laughs> Here's what we heard. Start small, celebrate wins often, be consistent and take action without allowing distractions to take you off course. We've learned so much from them today, and I hope that 
this program today brings to you some of the things that you can take along your journey toward organizational excellence. I really appreciate Ryan and Kathy being on our show today. We have some events coming up that we'd love you to check out. To learn more, head over to Studer, S-T-U-D-E-R, education, E-D-U, C-A-T-I-O-N dot com slash events. I look forward to connecting with you next time as we continue to focus on the nine principles for organizational excellence so that we can be our best at work. Have a great week.